What's up, guys? This is Mike again um, with this continuing series of little bits and pieces of information I've learned as a filmmaker over the last 10 years. I want to talk about how you could get on a film set working on the film set in the crew paid by tomorrow. So again, to not use clickbaity titles, I fully intend to tell you everything you'd need to know to be able to get on a film set by tomorrow. There's a lot of um, elements to that that may not work as quickly as tomorrow, but I, I do believe that if you do these few things that I'm about to tell you, you could be working on a film set, uh, be it with a commercial or a narrative uh, film project. In just a few days, a couple of weeks, it will happen, as long as you're persistent, and most importantly, just be a little patient. So something to know about working film sets. Most paid professional production is divided into two categories. You have commercial work, which is like anything with advertising, a product, something like that, and then narrative film work. Um, YouTube has also created this other amount of what's called content, which is this is content. What you're watching right now is content. But for the most part, it's advertising work and then narrative work. I typically work mostly in the advertising work. Um, I create commercials. Um, I'll put a couple up on the screen as we're talking, some of my latest work. Um, but I also do a little bit of work in the narrative film world. My experience is mostly in commercial work, so I can't really speak too much to the narrative stuff as I am trying to get into that world myself. In the commercial film world, everything works the same as you would see on any movie set or TV show. Obviously, something like Game of Thrones has thousands and thousands of people. Most commercial shoots don't have that many people working. And the productions tend to be only you know, one to a couple of days long. Um, so it moves pretty quickly. You are shooting shorter scripts. Things tend to be about 30 seconds to a couple of minutes long. Um, but for the most part, from the director down to the production assistants, it's the same hierarchy. What I wanna tell you about today is how to get into a film set as a production assistant or a PA. A lot of people know that term just from television and film and stuff. A PA is kind of the first rung in the ladder to being on a film set and to being a filmmaker professionally. I didn't um, start doing PA work necessarily the way that I'm gonna to explain to you here today, but the first company that I worked for that's all I did was production assistant stuff, you know, moving stuff from here to there, getting coffee for people, setting up food. It is basically the film intern for the most part. Now, that doesn't mean you have to make no money doing it. There are a lot of opportunities if you're willing to volunteer to be a production assistant. Um, but what I want to tell you about is how to get on an actual paid production. I don't know rates for PAs in other cities or other states, but I know in Kansas City when I hire film crews, a PA typically makes about $200 a day, which, you know, when you divide that out over a 10 or 12 hour day can be about $20 an hour. Keep in mind though, as a freelancer, that $20 an hour, you have to pay your taxes and your health insurance and, and, and any other financial burden is on you as the freelancer. So it comes out to be quite a bit less than $20 an hour, but $20 an hour is a great start, especially if you're currently working at a job which pays less than $15 or $10 an hour. Becoming a PA on a set is a pretty viable option for a job. In fact, I mentor high schoolers from time to time. This last summer, I had my first class of five high schoolers that came through. All of them were interested in film. All of them were studying film. Even if you're not gonna go to college, you can go and PA tomorrow. I told a few of them, you know, instead of summer jobs, maybe look into PA. The reason is becoming a PA on set requires almost no background information, background knowledge, or expertise. It helps if you understand the way film production works. It helps if you understand cameras. It helps if you understand the world. But for the most part, a good PA just needs a couple of skills. You have to be hardworking. You have to be willing to listen. And you have to minimize complaining. Nobody wants to work with anybody who complains. I've, I've been guilty of it myself in the past as something that I, I try to minimize on every set that I'm on, even now as a director in charge of the entire production. It is a difficult physical labor job. You'll be picking things up. You'll be moving around. You'll be on your feet all day. But $200 a day is, is a fair amount of money. And if you're booked frequently, that could become your full-time job very easily. Again, making $200 a day is great if you're booked. And what a lot of people do is have part-time jobs or full-time jobs that they do nine to five and they PA on the weekends or on evenings. But eventually, if you become good enough at it and you become reliable enough at it, you could potentially be working as a PA three, four, five, six, seven days a week. If you're doing that, you know, working five days a week, making $200 a day, 
that could end up being about $1,000 a week, $4,000 a month. That's a pretty solid job, especially if you're really passionate about film. It helps when people are passionate about what's going on. And it also helps when the days get long, like just understanding like, hey, this is my career. This is something I'm super interested in. To address the title of the, the video about how to get on a film set tomorrow, it's really not all that complicated. The one caveat to that is that you have to have a somewhat active production community in the town that you live in. For me in Kansas City, we actually do have a pretty viable production industry here in town. There's usually most days of the week something shooting either for um, commercial stuff. Uh, we do some reality TV. Um, every once in a while there's a narrative production. But advertising alone keeps people pretty busy in this town. So we do have a good list of people working professionally in the film industry. If you live in a town about the size of Kansas City, most likely you have a production community in your town as well. I've traveled the country working in big cities like LA and New York and Chicago, but I've also worked in Cincinnati, in Orlando, in Phoenix. All of those cities have pretty viable communities making production as their full-time job. If you don't live in a city that has a production community like that, chances are you live not far from one. And some of the harsh reality of wanting to work in production means you may not be able to live in a really small town. You may have to move to a little bit bigger city, but by no means does it mean you have to move to LA or New York. There's plenty of jobs in every small and mid-market town across the country. If you are lucky enough to have a production community in town, chances are you probably have a film resources website or a film production office. In Kansas City, we have a great one. And if you were someone in Kansas City who wanted to work on production tomorrow, this would be your first step. You would go to the website and fill out the information and put yourself out there as a production assistant. You may even be able to email whoever works at these film offices and tell them, hey, I'm new to production. I would really love to get onto a set. I would love to work as a production assistant sometime in the city. Can you put me in touch with somebody? From there, they may be able to connect you through email to other producers in town that hire PAs all the time. The key to the whole process is to make that connection. Not only make that connection, but be friendly and willing and hardworking when the time finally does come and you get called up to be on set. Just because you put your name on the film list or just because you get in touch with someone doesn't necessarily mean you'll be able to work the next day, but you could be, you never know. There may be a set uh, in which a PA dropped out and you need to be called up immediately. And if you show up and work hard and are reliable and are willing to learn, chances are the person that called you to be on that set will likely want to call you again to be on their next set. And that's kind of how film production works as a whole. It's uh, a, a small community of people continually working on projects again and again together until they find the right team of people that work well as a unit. And then you become what's called a first call. If you get on a set where a producer hires you as a PA and you do a really great job, the next time they have a job, you might be the first person they call to get on set as a production assistant. And from there, it can go to a lot of different areas. I wanna cover that in a later video of how to go from PA to another position on set and, and how to climb that ladder. But for the most part, getting your name out there, getting connected with the right people, letting people know you're interested in production, and then probably the biggest, probably the biggest piece of advice that I'd have is to be patient. You definitely don't want to continue to email a producer again and again if they haven't hired you. You want to let them know that you're there. If they haven't called you in a couple of weeks, you know, you may drop them another line and just say, I'm still interested, just let me know when you have the opportunity. And be understanding that a lot of times as filmmakers, when we're hiring production assistants and other folks on set, we don't necessarily always have jobs. For example, right now I'm in a very slow period. I don't I haven't had a booked job for a couple of weeks, which is why I'm making these videos. But if you continue to be patient and they finally do call you, which it will happen, that first time, that first time you're on set, that's a big, that's a big moment. You are on a film set. You went from whatever job you were working or maybe not working to being someone who is on a film set actively working, creating a commercial or a narrative film or some piece of content. And from there, it's kind of up to you. If you work hard and you are willing to learn and you are super passionate about film, you could go from being a PA to a director within a few years if you're willing to do the work. If you live in a city where there's a production office, try to get in touch with that production office. If there's not a production office, I would be willing to bet that there are some producers in town that you could get hooked up with and just let them know that you're interested in working. Put it out there and then you just have to be patient until they call and when they do, that's your time. Again, you may not go from working on one set to being booked five days a week, 
But if you keep at it, it will happen. And then pretty soon, if you're making $200 a day, that might be your primary source of income. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. If you don't mind uh, clicking that subscribe button. And then if you have any questions that you'd be interested in hearing me answer or address, um, kind of the focus of these series of videos is to address some of the things that other vloggers and filmmakers on YouTube don't necessarily talk about. This is not necessarily the sexiest stuff in the world. Watching videos about cameras and, and color correction and all that is, definitely uh, something you'll wanna do as well. This series of videos is to fill in other gaps that aren't necessarily talked about all the time. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.